In this video, this is the second video in the review of Python basics, we're going to talk about the selective execution of code. Okay, so in the example we have here now, the order of execution is going to be, and we'll talk about more of this with functions. Basically, when it hits the comment in line one, it's going to ignore comments as always. That's for us, not for the computer, not for the interpreter. Uh, it's going to skip the blank line, go to line three. When it sees the def statement, which means we're starting a function, it knows to make note of the location of that, but ignore it for now. Okay, so it's going to ignore four and five and all the way down until it gets to line eight. So if I were to ask you, what is the first line number to execute in this code, the first line number is number eight. Eight executes first. It, it says to execute the main function. It knows where that's at since it's seen it before. It then redirects to three and then to four. When it gets to line five, it's blank. It would go back to line nine. That's blank that it's done, okay? So if we want to alter the way we're going to do that, it's going to be very much like it is in C++. The syntax is a little different, the same basic idea. And that's with an if statement, okay? So if we wanted to do a simple, uh, we could ask the user for input here, but, but in, uh, for the sake of brevity, we're not going to do that. So we have X being equal to 20. So we want to print if 20 is odd or not, okay? So I can simply do an if, if's the keyword, okay? The condition I want, if X mod two, is equal to zero. Cool. Okay. Print even, let's say. Okay. So if I run this, it should print even. Okay. So, and, and just to, I assume this is similar. We've seen this before. So um, I'm including my conditional expression in parentheses. I have the colon at the end to denote that I'm in a control structure. Everything indented over like that will be part of that control structure. So I happen to not have more lines, but I could have, okay, here. Uh, I'm using the double equals for equality. Should be just like it is in, in C++. We have the greater than equal to, less than equal to, not equal to, all of that uh, are, are, should be the same, okay? Then I have a value here that I'm comparing it to. Uh, that's the mod function, percents the mod function. The number's even, then if you modded the two, the remainder should be zero. We should print even. That works. Okay. Test it out here. If we have a 21, run it again with a green arrow, we get nothing. Okay. Didn't do anything. Okay. So again, as far as the execution goes here, now line 11 is the first line to execute. Then it's going to go to line three since it knows where that's at. Line four, <clears throat> X gets its value. Line five, and since line five returns a false, because x mod 2 is not equal to 0, it's then going to go past this indentation over to whatever's indented by here. Okay, so if I had a print statement here, have there. That's weird, it won't line up for me. Very strange. Should line up to that. I wonder if I need to go here. Try this again. I'm relatively new to PyCharm, although I'm a fan. Okay, there we go. I had to go to the end, hit new line, then hit the backspace or the shift tab. Okay. And now I can print <clears> odd <throat> because in this case it has to be one or the other. Okay. So is this going to work? Let's see. 21 it prints odd. That's good. Okay. Let's test it back with an even number. 20. Okay, it's printing even and odd. Let's look, look at that. Again, executing <clears throat> line. 11 happens first, then three, then four, then five. Five in this case is true, so six executes. When this is done, it just goes down to seven and does that as well, okay? So we're going to need a two-part here, okay? So we're going to have to say here, uh, messed it up again, got to go there, got to do a shift tab backwards. I'm going to say an else. Okay, else has no conditions on it, okay, but it does have a colon. And then I can bring this one back up to there. And now it will print on. Okay, so if this condition is true, if five is true, six executes. If not, then seven, then sorry, then eight executes. Okay. And there could be multiple lines in either in either of these sections. Okay. So that gets our if 
and our else both work more or less like they did in um, in C plus plus. You know, we can also do an and you know and x is greater than one hundred. Okay, so we can combine those together with ands or ors, uh, just like we would expect. Okay, so it's probably not going to print. It's going to print the odd because it didn't like that part, which is it doesn't make sense this program, but you can connect those together. Okay, so now let's look if we want to have more than one condition. Okay, so let's say we want to have three conditions. Okay, we can do embedded ifs. I could say let's say we're gonna we're gonna have three ranges of numbers. We're going to say um, numbers, we're going to call them small numbers, are less than 20. Okay. And again, this is a good place for some comments. Okay. So small, it's going to be less than 20. We're going to have medium being between 21 and 100. And then we're going to have large greater than 100. Okay. Easy enough. Okay, so this time I'm going to go ahead and put in an input just to make it a little easier on myself, hopefully. Okay, number, colon, probably should say integer, but we'll be okay. Okay, so for this first one, I'm going to say if x is less than 20. Nope, there's a problem in my description. I need 20 to be right there. Okay, so if it's less than 20, I'm going to print out small, okay, elif, okay, so it's just, it's an elif, some languages do an else if, one word, but this does elif like we would expect, okay, elif, we're going to say x is um, less than 100 and one, since I put the 100 here, okay? Note, I don't need to be concerned about uh, whether or not it's less than 20 because I, I wouldn't be here, okay? So that's how these work. So this would be, so we'll get this in here. I'll explain that again a bit, okay? So if, Again, we execute, we go to 15 first, then we go to five, we go to six to get our value. Assuming there's no error, we move on to eight. If this is true, we execute line nine and then go down beyond, so down to 12, okay? We get to line 10 only if X is not true. So we know our X is going to be uh, 20 or greater or it wouldn't be here. So we don't have to put that in. Uh, we could say again, if we wanted to, to be super thorough, x is less than 20 and x is greater than 101. We can't, we don't need to, okay? What that does for us? Huh, I don't know. don't know what that was about. It was a, a hint we didn't need. Okay, but again, we don't need it. It's not wrong, but it's not as right. The style's off a bit, okay? So while we're at it, let's just do one more elif. x is greater than 101, okay? No, greater than 100 should be fine. Greater than 100, because 100 will not count there. Wouldn't matter if 100 would be gone at this point anyway, then we can print launch, okay? Um, if we knew that X was a positive number, we could just put an else there at the end, but we don't. I mean, it could be negative, which, which could cause us some trouble. So this should take care of all of that. Run this, see if it works, okay? We'll start by entering a number four. Should tell us that it's small. It did. Okay. Run it again with well, something in the medium range, like 25 is medium. Okay. And then let's run it again. Something 123 is large. Okay. So we're good. So it, we haven't done much, but um, but at least we have something, you know, that, that we can get an example of. Okay. Note that we could nest these as well. Okay, so I could say here, if x mod 2 is equal to 0, okay, another colon, and now watch the indentation here, I can print small odd number, 
Okay. And then I come back out to there if I want to do something else. Okay. So in, in this case, if it's a small, it should be small even. If it's small odd number, it's just going to print out as, as being small. I could put an else in there if I wanted, but I don't have to. Okay. So you can nest those around. And just as a, as a programming tip, I find that if I'm doing multiple nests for anything, I'll get the outer one working first and then just put you know, some dummy code if I need to and then work on the inner ones from there. Okay. But again, looking at the indentation, line eight is part of the main function. Okay. Line nine is part of the, in, in fact, line nine is part of this if statement and it happens only if X is less than 20. Okay. Line 10 is part of the secondary if. It happens only if both of those two ifs are true. Okay. This one, we're at the same level as the second if, so we're part of the first if. Okay. This is at the same level as the first if, but its own thing. This is the second else if is true. Uh, this is again at the same level of, of the ifs. Okay. And then this print, this is only part of the second elif. Okay. So that's how those work. Okay. We have this for conditional execution. Note that there is no switch. Okay. Um, C or sorry, C has a switch. Switch is kind of iffy sometimes because it does a, a, a jump, an, an unconditional jump, which can be a problem. And for that reason, I think Python doesn't include it. Okay. So you can just do multiple if statements, if else is, if, if else if, if you want to do that. Okay. So I think that should, uh, should take care of it as far as getting us up to speed on selective execution. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop the video here.